have an amazing guest on this evening. And uh, we will have a, another trivia question. We had, um, we've had some amazing times with these trivia questions. Uh, tonight, I'm gonna throw a curveball at you. We're gonna see who won that grand prize of uh, $250. This will be exciting. Also, I wanna thank all of you too for going on that, going to clevelandgear.com, signing up, becoming a member, and posting your comments and answering questions has just been amazing. We've gotten a tremendous amount of uh, people signing up and supporting each other and uh, just posting their feelings and, and pictures. And it's really been an amazing journey. I mean, it's happened so, so fast. So all of you that wants to be a part of this social media network and converse with each other, go to clevelandgary.com, log and, and sign up. You know, if you're already a member, of course, you can keep posting your comments, you know, post on your wall, post your comments, uh, questions, and those of you, you know, uh, read those posts, answer questions. We just want to dialogue with each other, converse back and forth, and uh, just build a network, you know, build our own social network, and that's a beautiful thing. It's all about collaboration, and uh, we're, so, we're so excited about that. Um, I'll also have tonight uh, Alonka Harizi, who's been on the show before. She's a partner of mine, uh, works with me on a daily basis in ECRIT. And of course, we'll have my partner, Bill Houston, uh, at the very uh, end of the show. Now, our first guest, amazing credentials, uh, reading over her curricula vitae, and uh, I've read over about maybe 10 or 15, with 12, 12 curricula vitaes prior to the show. And I chose this, 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 I chose this uh, person because uh, her credentials are very strong and uh, seems to have a very strong passion for giving back and helping people and uh, just, uh, just passionate about entrepreneurship. And I wanna bring her on, uh, Dina, Davina Smith, very unusual name, Davina Smith. Hi, Davina, welcome. Hi, good evening. Thank you so much, it's a pleasure to be here. Awesome, awesome, good to have you. We were so excited. You know, you got some exciting information to share with us. And uh, I was reading over your curricula by Tay. I tell you, it was just mind staggering. I mean, I, it buckled my knees. I said, wow, she's accomplished quite a bit. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, where you're from. So I'm normally from um, Northern Virginia here in uh, close to the DC area, grew up here. And then after high school, I went into the military. So that took me all across the world. Um, joining the military is probably one of the biggest and best decisions I made in my life um, because I learned their you know, leadership. I learned how to serve at a bigger level. Um, I learned how to be part of a team. So it really is the foundation, I think, of who I am today. Um, and then aside from that, currently I'm a government contractor. I support um, a organization on Fort Belvoir, Defense Threat Reduction Agency. I've been there since 2008. I've been supporting the DOD for 29 years now. And outside of that, an entrepreneur, um, author, and I just, like you said, I'd love giving back to the community, so. Awesome. Well, what made you go into the military? I mean, did you have any aspirations as a kid uh, when you were in high school, I'm going to go to the military? I never wanted to go to the military, you know. What, what, what prompted that? So actually, um, I didn't have money for college. So it's, I found out that the military would actually give you money to get your degree to go to college. So I joined the military and they did. They gave me the money. Um, of course, I earned it, but you know, they gave you, while you were on active duty, you could get 75% of your tuition paid. And then even when I got out of the military, I used that as well to get my PhD. So all the degrees that I've received have been using the, the GI Bill money that the military gave me. Wow, awesome, pretty awesome. Wow, and you served 20 years in the military. No, I did 12 and a half years, 13 years, basically. Now, mm -hmm. Is there a rank? They're like rankings, right? You... Yep, so I was a um, staff sergeant, E6, when I got out. Mm -hmm. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. Something very intriguing. I um, ran across... Uh, a book called Positive Principles, and I've noticed uh, it's uh, pretty interesting as I was reading 
to it, all these affirmations like popcorn and how it relates to human life and pretty intriguing. I've read a lot of books, but this was pretty intriguing. Tell us a little bit about this book. It's called Positive Principles. And why did you write this book? And uh, what drove you to write the book? Uh, what's this book all about? Positive Principles. So it is, it really, um, COVID actually inspired it because there's something about when you're constantly going and going and going, you really can't hear some of the things that are in the inside of you. But COVID, I had a chance to to just kind of settle down and hear some of the things that were going on inside of me. And I started looking around and seeing these ordinary things that, you know, we think are so mundane, but everything and everybody has a story to tell. And so I just take ordinary objects and I find the positive and I find a, a lesson in there that can be applied, you know, personally, professionally, just improve your relationships to think positive and just have a more positive, powerful life. Interesting. Popcorn, seeds of purpose. Explain that. <laughs> Pretty interesting. So when you put popcorn in the microwave, it's not actually popcorn. They're actually seeds of potential that can grow into their purpose. And in the same way, everything we do in life is, is planting seeds. You know, you planted seeds as a football player, probably hundreds and thousands of young kids out there that are, you know, idolize you and now are going after their dream because they saw you do it. You know, in the same way with all the business that you have going on, there's people that are watching you and those are seeds that are being planted and you don't know where they're going to grow or how they're going to come up. And so popcorn is just a great example of that seed time and harvest. You know, everybody plants the seeds, but most of us don't want to wait the time you know, and then we see the harvest. And then the same way with popcorn, if you put it in the microwave and you turn on the heat, it's going to start popping. But if you take it out before it's done, the heat is going to, if you take it out of the heat, the transformation process is going to be broken. And it's the same thing in life. You know, we go through situations and if you come out of that situation before your time, if you don't want to wait, you know, through that, that trial, then you're, you're breaking that transformation process and you might be hindering who you have a potential to become. Awesome, pretty awesome, wow. If that popcorn seed is not manifest, it cannot transform and right. become great, you know, it cannot become the fullness thereof. Right. It's pretty interesting. Pots and pans. Now that got me. Pots and pans. How can you relate how do you relate that to human life? I mean So I mean I think we are all vessels, right? And we're all designed to serve. You know, and there's something about serving that, you know, if you're empty you have nothing to serve, right? But when you start serving, you realize there's something inside of you of value that you can give to other people. And pots and pans, they're not simply, you know, things, items to be used to cook with, right? They're used to serve, to bring value, to bring life, sustainment. And as the same way, we're pots. Everything that we pour into us, it's going to create an aroma. It's going to saturate the area around us, right? It can be a pleasant smell or it can be a nasty smell. But whatever you put in you is what you're going to be able to serve back out. And so sir, pots just remind us that, you know, we're more than simply just beings. You know, we're vessels. We carry things that can be used to serve, to make a difference, you know, like um, with in the community, with your businesses and things like that. You know, th those things are within you and you're the pot carrying all these things that are bringing value to so many people across the world. Awesome. Pretty awesome. It's amazing. Um, a lot of people leave a lot on the table. You know, you have gifts. God blesses. He gives us gifts. He gives some some people one. He gives some two, some three. And uh, what's so interesting about life, my mom always said said that to me. You know, if you have it in you to play football, play pro baseball, then then uh, if you work hard at it and you. You know, you're consistent, you'll do that. But that but came in there. But there's more to life. If God gave you the ability to run businesses, create intrinsic value, you know, infatuate people's lives in a positive way, don't just walk around the rest of your life saying, okay, you know, I played NFL football. You know, that's not acceptable because at the end of the day, when you stand before him, He's, you're going to look and see all that you left on the table. And you're going to say, oh, my goodness. He said, well, you know, hey, the boat came by this time. You didn't pay attention. The boat came by because you were so enamored with this sport. 
not taking anything away from it. But the point is, you can't leave anything on the table. Family is first, no question. But if you have a gift, you know, hey, pursue it, no matter what it is. If it's one, if it's two, don't leave anything on the table. Absolutely. And I think that everything we do, we're using our gifts, we're using our talents. You know, just because, you know, you did football doesn't mean you're not using the same skills over here as a business owner. You know, you're still part of a huge team. You're still supporting others. You're still a part of something that's bigger than yourself. You're still giving back to the community. And that's how I see it with, you know, the military seems like it's so much different than what I'm doing now, but it's not. It's still being a part of a big community, being something bigger than myself, serving others, making a difference, being a leader, you know, and all those things, all the skills that you pick up along the way, those are things that you continue to use to build who you are. Absolutely. In other words, you know, no different from the military or football. It's a foundation, you know. Mm -hmm. you, it, it's a foundation where you acquire the discipline, the, the discipline that it takes to succeed at anything in life, you know, because you're going to have many obstacles. You're going to have hurdles you have to jump over. Nothing is easy, you know what I mean? So I, I can definitely relate to that. Um, you're, you have your PhD in human services and public health. Pretty interesting, uh, your doctoral in uh, human service and public health. Um, but, but reading your book and, and, and talking with you a little bit on the set before the show, I mean, you're very driven. You know, what is what, what, what drives you? Again, I, I love helping people. I, I really, I want to leave a legacy. You know, I want to know I want people to know I was here and I made a difference, you know, and I think that's what entrepreneurship is about. It's about serving others. It's about providing, you know, a service that's of value to people. It's about making a difference, letting people know you're here. And again, not wasting your talents. You know, like you said, we're given these talents, you know, and, and for the you know Christian people out there, you know, the Bible says that God took away the talents from the person that had, you know, just the one and gave it to the person who had three because they actually used it. You know, so I believe that, you know, every minute should be making a difference. You know, everything should be going towards your ultimate goal. And my ultimate goal is to leave a legacy and help people. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, I remember, boy, my mother telling me that as well. You know, showed me that scripture in the Bible where, you know, one guy had one talent, the other guy had two talents, another guy had three talents. And uh, you would think, you know, he would, take away one of the guy, guys talent, with the guys with the three talents. You would think he would take one of his talents, but ironically, he took away the guy that had one talent and gave it to the guy with three talents. So that, that's a clear indication of uh, not giving up on what's in your heart, because what's in your heart, if you follow your heart, you follow, you follow your heart, there's nothing you can accomplish if you put your mind to it. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, Davina, I've also read here in this overpowering curriculum I take, I think you need to take a break, maybe a vacation, you need to rest, <laughs> maybe take a take any time off. I do take a little bit of time off, I do. I mean, I do believe in, you don't necessarily have to go away. You know, you can just kind of find your quiet place, you know, go out in the nature and just be in the silence or you know, take a bubble bath or, you know, just calm your mind. All right. Anything like horses, uh, you know, leisure time, because I tell you, when you're in work mode, you're in work mode. And boy, sometimes it's just good to get away and ride your bike, you know, ride a horse, go out in the country, look at the trees, throw a fishing pole in the water. Do you do anything like that? Fish? No, I do like to, I like to ride bikes. I like to walk. Um, I do like to paint. Um, I do some sip and paints and it's a really good activity just to clear your mind. And, you know, while you're painting, you don't think about anything else. So um, I choose just get a group of girls together and, and we just, you know, sip and paint and ponder and it's pretty relaxing. Pretty interesting. Painting, wow. That's something I've never tried. You know, you ever heard of Picasso? Mm -hmm. You ever heard of Picasso? I have. Yeah. Now, tell uh -huh. me a little, little, little bit about this painting. What is, have there been any black, black famous painters? 
Not that I know of, but I'm sure there is. Yeah, that's sad. That's I mean, talk. I, you know, I bet if I went and checked on the Black Shopping channel, I would probably find some pretty decent art out there. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, we can find the book. Now, where can we find this book? Have you uploaded it yet? I have um, not, but it will be there very soon. All right, so they'll be able to find it on Black Shopping Channel. Uh, yes. The Million Seller, Positive Principles. Now, is there anything else in that book that can help? You know, I mean, it's interesting. We talked about popcorn. We talked about pots and pans. Anything, football, baseball, uh, sweet potato? <laughs> basketball. So basketball is actually my favorite sport. Um, so there, there is some examples of, in, of basketball. But in general, you know, the, the scoreboard, right? We have a scoreboard in almost all sports. And in life, you know, it's the same way. You should have a scoreboard. You should keep score of your accomplishments. You should celebrate your wins, you know? But if you're not watching the score, no. scoreboard, you don't know whether you're winning or losing. I don't want to be on mute. I don't want them Very true. to hear me. Davina, if you had to do anything over in your life, camera on. Is there anything you would do different? There is nothing I would, there's probably nothing I would do different. I would probably start a little bit earlier. I think in terms of entrepreneurship, I think sometimes um, the biggest thing with entrepreneurship is just having the, the courage. And what really um, someone once told me, they said, you know, you were in the military, so you have the courage. You just have to transfer it from there to these different areas. And that really, that stuck with me. I thought, you know, and that's how it is in life. You know, you can take the same skills, the same experiences, and you can translate them into other areas and use them to be successful. And that's really what the book is about, is just taking these things that are already in the universe, you know, that we see every day, and they already have, they're telling us a story. They're telling us a success principle. We just have to listen to it, find it, and then use it. All right. So what advice would you give younger women who are aspiring entrepreneurs who uh, may have had some tough times, you know, even some challenges at home, challenges in school, but uh, they, they need that extra, extra push, you know, to get them over the top. Life is not easy, you know, the road is not easy sometimes. And I'm sure you've had some challenges. You know, before you answer that question, what have been your toughest challenges? Was it easy breezy for you? I mean, school, oh. business, entrepreneur. No, of course not. Um, but I think the biggest challenge is always our mindset. I think it's, you know, having the, the belief in yourself. You know, a lot of the challenges are really within our own minds. So once, you're, once you believe that you can do it, then half of the battle is won. Absolutely, absolutely. That is true. There's nothing you cannot achieve if you put your mind to it. Wow. You're an author, PhD, human services and public health. You love to paint. Man, interesting. I was talking to a, a colleague of mine earlier, and we were talking about education. You know, you have lawyers, you have doctors, and, uh, uh, you know, MBAs and Jewish doctorate, what have you. But, you know, you ever heard the term educated fool? Yes. <laughs> you know, education is good. And if you, Davina, if you look at today, you know, with, with the uh, advent of social media, we're in a whole different world. And a lot of these kids are taking up trades, going to IT school. And, you know, you look at Facebook, you know, Zucker and even Bill Gates fell out of school. And these guys have become very prominent figures in the world of business. Uh, what do you think about that? Contrasting education to non-educated fools. What do you? What do you? How do you? How do you? Um, how do you? How do you read into that? Well, I think education is obviously. I believe in education, but I think more so than the piece of paper is what you do with the education that you gain. You know, and a lot of education should be your personal development plan. You know, and a lot of people once they leave high school, that's it. You know, they don't pick up another book. They don't learn anything new. It's just the same experience over and over and over again. You know, but I think what you do with that piece of paper 
what was behind that piece of paper, that's what really matters. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, those 20 minutes went by really fast. Davina, I want to thank you for coming on the show. And we'd love to have you back. I mean, I'm sure a lot of young folks, as well as old, got some very, got some vital information they can take with them and use. So once again, we thank you, Davina Smith, Dr. Should I say Dr. Davina Smith, for coming on the show. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Keep those dials locked. We'll be right back. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Sure, people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. You've decided that you're not going to allow your circumstances to define you. You've decided that you're not going to allow the events, the things, the people, life, determine who you become. Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma was a true event that took place. A group of African Americans got together and created an economic system that created wealth amongst each other by circulating their dollars within their own community. They were so financially successful until they were bombed, beaten, many killed, resulting in destroying what was once known as Black Wall Street. The Black Shopping Channel is back on the street again to stay. Support the Black Shopping Channel vendors in this new fintech company that is connected Connecting vendors to shoppers, resulting in circulating wealth back into the urban community. And hip hop, rap, and RB music artists are reaching the world with their music at blackshoppingchannel.com. Have you had a problem getting approved for a mortgage, car, or personal loan? You want a home, you want a car, but your Equifax, Experian, TransUnion credit reports are not satisfactory to lenders, so you're denied credit approval. If you or anyone you know have been denied credit approval in these areas, the answer is eCredit, the new credit bureau that can validate your credit worthiness to get you approved through eCredit's lending division, even if you've had a bankruptcy, for closure or collections. For more information, go to www.ecrid.com. Create your own ecrid credit report by adding your light bill, water bill, mobile phone, auto insurance, and even rental payments. All validate your credit worthiness at ecrid. Go to www.ecrid.com and sign up today. It's free. Get the keys to your new home or your new car. The Black Shopping Channel is America's first 24-hour minority TV shopping channel that aired on Dish Network in 14 million homes. Visit our website at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. If you're a small business owner and would like to sell your products on the Black Shopping Channel, go to www.blackshoppingchannel.com and sign up as a member. It's free. Upload your product schedule live stream events music artists sell your music and control your career it's time to get in the game and start supporting our small business owners and music artists go to black shopping channel and shop today black wall street is back at www.blackshoppingchannel.com the black shopping channel giving back moving forward Get your praise on with the sounds of victory. 104.5. Flame. The hottest R&B hits in oldies. Bigger and better. This is a paid advertisement. It does not represent the views of WFLM ownership, management, or staff. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Hi, welcome back to Beyond Sports. I'm Cleveland Gary, your host. We had Davina Smith. Wow, what a powerful message. Man, I'm sure a lot of young folks got uh, some very good information you can take with you and use it. Wow. Well, our next guest uh, we've had on before, uh, part of mine, travels around the world, have done a lot of things on a global platform, 
and uh, just happy and excited to have her back, uh, Halanka Harizi. Is Halanka there? Hi there. Hello. How are you, Cleveland? How are you? I'm, I'm good. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm good. thank you. I'm really good. excited about what you're doing. My gosh, tell me about all the wonderful things and going to the Grand Prix and all of this stuff going on. You've got to tell me about it. Right. Well, you know, we, we've, we've been able to do quite a bit uh, over the past month with, with Iker de Lanka. I tell you, it's been amazing. I mean, of course, you know about the Strax deal. We signed that deal with the um, a NASDAQ publicly traded company. That's just phenomenal. Over 250 publicly traded companies. And uh, I'm learning a lot from the forum. And uh, it's just amazing because, you know, now we're connected to the big boys on the big streets. When you talk about the uh, Wall Streets and you're talking about uh, uh, Morningstar, all those major, major, major players on Wall Street now will have access to. And when you're looking at it from an investor perspective, that's great. When we're in the market, you know, we're doing secondary offerings and growing our market cap, creating shareholder value. So I'm just so excited about that. Now, you know, behind the scenes, you guys are doing an amazing job and I'm just so, so excited about it. It's obvious we can't talk about some of these things yet until they come to full fruition as it relates to the public. But, but um, uh, like, you know, the reason why I want to bring you back on the show, I mean, you, you're so passionate about Egret and all the things that you've done in your life, all the things you've accomplished. I don't even look at your curriculum by tape. People, I don't think a lot would understand it, you know. Uh, you know what, even before we talk about Ikra, I'm gonna do something just totally off, off guard here, offline. Just tell us a little bit about you, the travels, the stories you've told me. I mean, we went over to Hong Kong. You and I remember we went over to Hong Kong, but just some stories you've told me, Egypt and all these countries you've been to and you how you've helped the underprivileged and you've met with kings and queens. Tell me an exciting story. Tell me about Egypt. How was your trip in Egypt? What exactly did you, did you, you lived there for a little while, right? Well, uh, I was there mainly, um, well, I guess when I was about 22 years old, I started going to Egypt, mainly um, went with Pat Flanagan, who was a scientist at that time. And he wanted to do research on um, electromagnetic fields, which I really didn't know very much about at that time. And, but that's what got me interested in it. And uh, I was lucky enough to meet uh, Anwar Sadat at that time and his vice president. Um, so uh, Said Merai, and they became very close friends of mine. And I just embraced them and loved to be around them. They were so much fun, so sweet and such an incredible country Egypt was. India I've been to and India was, was very sad and everybody's poor and everybody's, you know, I just want to, it breaks my heart to be there. But in, but Egypt is so different because everybody's very loving and caring and wants to feed you. <laughs> and wow. they just, I just, I just love that country a lot. Wow. Wow. So I've been there since the, since the seventies that have been going to Egypt, but um, so I'll, I love the Middle East, all of it. So I, I accumulate a lot of great friends from the Middle East and also from Europe and all, all those different places. So I'm very mm -hmm. lucky to have, God's just blessed me to be around those famous people, wonderful people um, all throughout the Middle East and, and those countries. And of course, then, then, it reached out to other countries from from there, Saudi Arabia, and and as a woman, I was very lucky to have. Um, excuse me, I should have turned that off. So I was very lucky to have gone to these places and to have worked. Sorry. Sound like he's doing the wula dance, right to left, huh? Your volume went out on us, Alanka. Your audio, your audio. I can't hear you. 
now? Yes. Tell us about those pyramids. You know those pyramids? I, I'm so intrigued, and I'm sure millions of people are. What's inside of those? I mean, I was told men build those brick by brick, right? Way back in the day. I mean, I mean, if you look at the advancement in technology and where we are today, back in the day, how in the world could they build something that big and that strong? I'm curious. I've seen on TV, you know, inside, they take you on a tour. Have you been inside some of those pyramids? Many, many times. And I was very lucky to have traveled there many times with different scientists. And that was our work for a while is measuring the frequencies and the electromagnetic fields inside the pyramids. And wow, it was mind blowing some of the things that we found. And, um, you know, in the King's Pyramid, um, in the main uh, Khufu Pyramid, um, to go up into those chambers, it was a long time ago. So now you can't even, you're not even allowed to do that. But in those days, I got to go all those great places because I knew Zaki Hawass and um, Zaki um, Antiquities. Zaki, Zaki Kawasaki, the motorcycle. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. Zaki, Zaki Hawass was a really great archaeologist, supposedly. He was on all kinds of channels. He considered himself a movie star, I think, more than anything else. But anyway. Uh, how's, um, the, how's, how's the food there in Egypt? The, the food. Wonderful. What are the Egyptians and Cube State? Do they have stuff like that there? Or just what, leaves and trees and bark? What? No, they have a <laughs> lot of lamb and um, they goat. OK. And um, goat. Uh, you know, now they have grocery stores just like we have here. But in the old days, they just had the beef hanging out with, you know, flies hanging on it and everything. And they just go and you just go with them. They just chop off a piece of it and, and give it to you, you know, wrapped in a piece of newspaper. It was really kind of weird. What? Yeah, yeah. I, I have a friend. I had a friend who was in the tent who had a huge tent. And it was out right outside the pyramids and it was overlooking the pyramids. You could oversee the, the, um, the beautiful um, things and speed of these pyramids. And then over to the side, you see, could see Zakara. Zakara. And um, so a lot of times, you know, I would go there and be with him. And um, so he would send me to the village to get the food and his cooks would prepare it right there in the tent. And I, I had a really hard time because it, it's literally hanging out wow. fresh. They don't freeze anything. They didn't freeze anything at that time. And they just cut it off and wrap it and give it to you. And then you go to the vegetable guy and you get the vegetables. And then you go to another guy to get the herbs. And it was Amazing. quite an experience. Quite an experience. Speaking, speaking of radio frequencies, you know, that brings me to the mind when I think about Alakarizi. You're famous for the Tesla watch. Many people don't know that. They went into, you know, it's more so of a, it's not a low house, a luxury brand, but people that have gone into the Saks Avenue and what have you, that low house watch, that radio, that, that, not radio, no, when I'm talking about radio, radio, frequency, high frequency. Tell us a little bit about the Tesla watch. It's it's was an amazing watch. You you've done exceptionally well. And how in the world? What gave you the idea to, to create this high frequency watch? Well, actually, you know, hanging around with the scientists um, and going to Egypt with them, um, I one of the scientists was very famous. His name was Andrei Puharich, and he was the um, he was. The, the science advisor to President Car Carter. And at that time, uh, I was very interested in how the healing modality took place and how healing actually took, took place in a person's body and how it, how it would work. And so I said, wow, let's, let's just experiment with this a bit more because he said, if we use frequencies, we really don't need pills. 
if we can work on the outside of the body where the field is, that makes all the difference in the physical part of the body. And it can actually change the, the physical part of the body. So that intrigued me. And the more I met um, Dr. Elden Bird, he was head of the Re Navy research. He and I um, also did a lot of experiments with ELF, extremely low frequencies. And so I decided with Andrea, um, we, we went, he lived in a little patch of land in um, the Reynolds property, um, Reynolds aluminum and Reynolds tobacco. And um, he in a little cabin. And I went there with him and worked quite a bit on this, on this uh, idea of ELF. And at that time, we didn't have computers or any of this kind of thing. It didn't seem like it was very important. But he said, believe me, Alonka, in the and later on, people are really going to need this. It's going to impact their lives in a great way. It's going to cause cancer. It's going to cause all kinds of things. And we need to do something about it. I said, okay, let's, let's do something about it. So he, was, um, he was, had his PhD. And he was a, a medical doctor. He has PhD in law. Um, and in physics, he was really a genius. And he took... Um, all these things and started playing around with them together. And we saw, wow, we really saw something happening when we put, we put it with a bracelet at that time and a watch. And we used a magnetometer to measure it. And it threw off the electromagnetic fields from the 60 cycle, which is all we had at that time, um, magnetic field. So then it went, further, further and further into we finally figured out a watch that we put it with a watch because we had a, a, a magnetic field, an electric field, and we put them together, they would cancel each other out with a chip that we had an idea for. And, and your, that now you are the creator and inventor of that. You have it. That's a patent of yours, correct? Pardon? It, that's a patent of yours. You're the creator and inventor of that chip. Yes. That's a patent. Your yes. patents, correct? I invented yeah. the chip for him. Yeah. You invented the chip. How many patents do you have currently? I have about four. Four patents. Wow. Yeah. Some of them are some, a lot of things uh, that I've invented just keep it as a um, corporate secret, just like Kentucky Fried Chicken. They still have theirs. Chicken is um, a well, corporate you know, secret. Well, Kentucky Fried Chicken, they say stole that recipe from a brother because the chicken is so good. Is that true? <laughs> I don't know. I knew Margaret very well. Um, his daughter, Margaret Sanders, and she was like my great my grandmother. And um, uh, let, I was with her many, many years and uh, loved her so much. And uh, she... She had a lot to say about that chicken, believe me, but <laughs> she loved her dad and she believed in it. And, uh, wow, so, but she said it is always kept a, as a secret. Secret? Wow, that's some good chicken. Man, that's some good chicken. Love Kentucky Fried Chicken. It is. It is. You're running on this day. But I, you know, I, I, I never, like this show is unscripted. We don't be playing anything here. It's just open. This is, a, this is our think tank. And I just wanted to kind of share, I wanted to share with people uh, who, you, who you are, you know, what you're standing for. You've made a tremendous, tremendous impact, you know, as an entrepreneur and also as a philanthropist. You know, you've helped many people, you know, all over the world. And, uh, and I'm so excited to have you a part of Ecrit, you know, with the new credit bureau, creating an opportunity for people, uh, a second chance those that have, even if they have bankruptcies, collections, judgments, it doesn't matter if they have a job and uh, they, they're making, you know, producing income, their income to debt ratio is positive, we'll get them in a home, very simple. They create their own credit report. It's a B2C relationship. They're in control of their credit life. They go there every month, pay on the equal bill due date. It updates their credit report instantly. And I'm so excited about that. And I run a dead horse, you beat a dead horse with a stick, but I just cannot say enough about it because uh, I'm just excited about what it can do for people. You know what I mean? Well, I think um, this is something revolutionary 
and it's a time, and it's time for it. It's a time when people are confused, they need all the help they can get. And um, I, I take my hat up to you and kudos for you. All this time, you, you really worked on this very hard and it's now it's coming to fruition. I don't, I don't think it could be at a better time. And people need you, people really do. And so I'm on the bandwagon. I want anything that I can do to help, I'm here to help. So I believe, well, because I believe it's gonna help people. It's gonna help yeah. them, it's gonna change their lives. And I know you would never be a part of anything that I do know is you are part of it. You're so passionate about what it could do for people. I, I, I mean, I know along the reason what you've done for kids all over the world. You know, I, I just can't even say enough about that. So to join us on Egret, and I've been in many, you know, uh, ventures, but this is one you just had to you say, look, I to get my grips around this. I got to be a part of it. So I'm so excited, so excited that you are part of Egret. Um, I remember I talked to you a little, little bit about Egret when we went to Hong Kong. And, you know, we got the ball rolling and uh, we had a great time there and a lot of uh, business we were able to accomplish. What advice would you give to young aspiring entrepreneurs who have a dream, who want to be independent, self-contained, self-sufficient? What advice would you give uh, a young aspiring entrepreneur? Just don't give up. You know, um, just keep at it. That's the secret. You know, um, how many times did Edison try to invent the light bulb? 95 times before we finally came up with it. And so any, any idea that they have, any idea that you can conceive, if you really believe in it, then do it. Don't give up. I know with the Tesla watch, it was before anybody had cellular phones or computers. Why did people even need, they had 60 cycle, but they really weren't so afraid of 60 cycle. But now that we have all of these other things, it's really become important. And at that time, I was an interior designer. I was traveling all over the world. I was having a great time with all these famous people. And the scientists said, oh, this is really, really important. We got to do this. So I gave up everything. I stopped it all. I sold it. I moved to the country in a Quonset hut in the middle of nowhere when brought the scientists together. And we started working on this because it was very important. And my parents thought I absolutely lost my mind because I had a very successful interior design business, an international one, and it won awards and all over internationally. But I knew in my gut that this was a very important thing for the future. Maybe I didn't see it right now, but I believed in what those scientists said that it, for the future, this was going to change the world. And so I kept on it. And you know, here we go in 2003 or 2004, it was a hundred million dollar company. I never dreamed it. So, you know, those things, they make a difference if you just stay at it, just don't quit, just keep working. And it'll, it'll, it'll finally come to it. God, God will hear you and God will say, mm, I, I think, I think this kid needs a break. So they'll, they'll, he'll come, he'll come through for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Alanka Reeves, I just want to say to you, um, it's always a pleasure, and I appreciate you taking our time uh, to be on the show again. It's always a pleasure, and you're always welcome, and I'm sure we'll be seeing you again and again and again. Ladies and gentlemen, Alanka Harizi. Thank you. Tell Court I said hi. Tell JD. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you so much. God the bless. Best. All right. Keep those dials locked. We'll be right back. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. Sure, people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. You've decided that you're not going to allow your circumstances to define you. You've decided that you're not going to allow the events, the things, the people, life, 
determine who you become. Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma was a true event that took place. A group of African Americans got together and created an economic system that created wealth amongst each other by circulating their dollars within their own community. They were so financially successful until they were bombed, beaten, many killed, resulting in destroying what was once known as Black Wall Street. The Black Shopping Channel is back on the street again to stay. Support the Black Shopping Channel vendors and this new fintech company that is connecting vendors to shoppers, resulting in circulating wealth back into the urban community. And hip hop, rap, and R&B music artists are reaching the world with their music at blackshoppingchannel.com. Have you had a problem getting approved for a mortgage, car, or personal loan? You want a home. You want a car. But your Equifax, Experian, TransUnion credit reports are not satisfactory to lenders, so you're denied credit approval. If you or anyone you know have been denied credit approval in these areas, the answer is eCred, the new credit bureau that can validate your credit worthiness to get you approved through eCred's lending division, even if you've had a bankruptcy, for closure or collections. For more information, go to www.ecrid.com. Create your own ecrid credit report by adding your light bill, water bill, mobile phone, auto insurance, and even rental payments. All validate your credit worthiness at ecrid. Go to www.ecrid.com and sign up today. It's free. Get the keys to your new home or your new car. The Black Shopping Channel is America's first 24-hour minority TV shopping channel that aired on Dish Network in 14 million homes. Visit our website at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. If you're a small business owner and would like to sell your products on the Black Shopping Channel, go to www.blackshoppingchannel.com and sign up as a member. It's free. Upload your product, schedule live stream events, music artists, sell your music, and control your career. It's time to get in the game and start supporting our small business owners and music artists. Go to Black Shopping Channel and shop today. Black Wall Street Street is back at www.blackshoppingchannel.com. The Black Shopping Channel, giving back, moving forward. 104.5. This is a paid advertisement. It does not represent the views of WFLM ownership, management, or staff. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104.5 WFLM, The Flame. All right, welcome back to Beyond Sports. I'm Cleveland Gary, your host. Now, we've had a, an exciting show. I mean, amazing. We've talked to Alon Carizzi, Dr. Smith, and it's just been an exciting show. I'm so, so happy. You know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to pop the trivia question to you guys. Now, tonight, I'm going to do something a little different. The winner of the trivia question will get... It won't be 250 bucks tonight, okay? Uh, but I'm going to give you something I think is of intrinsic value and uh, could truly, truly make you feel better. And uh, the winner of the trivia question tonight gets a box of these organic raisins from me. I will send them to you, these organic raisins. No, I'm just kidding. All right, you ready? The winner of tonight's the question gets a hundred dollars. Uh, I'm going to start having gift cards and other stuff. This is getting quite expensive. But anyway, here we go. I'm going to pop the question. Who was the first African American to run for president of the United States? Now I repeat, who was the first African American to run for president of the United States? Now you have to go to clevelandgarrett.com either log in or sign up, your, your profile will be created and you have you type in the answer. If you get that right, if you get the answer, the first one who answers the question wins the $100. Now, if you answer the question and you're the second one, it's gonna say winner, uh, we've already chosen a winner. So go to clevelandgarrett.com, sign up, all right? Post comments, start, you know, you know, start talking back and forth, dialoguing with people. They're waiting. I mean, we're doing great. 
everybody is just having a good time. All right. But when that hundred dollars, it's on you. Now I've thrown it out there. Who was the first African American to run for president of the United States? Now we're getting ready. We're kind of winding down here. I'm getting a little tired, but I'm excited. I can sit here and talk to you guys all night long. You know, if Alice and Larry didn't throw me off the set, I'll sit here and talk all night, night long. I'll just bring my food right in here to eat and talk to you all night. All right. But uh, I'm going to bring my main man on, Bill Houston. Uh, he's with us out of Louisville. Uh, let's take a little time, a little break. And uh, Bill, are you there? I am. I can't see you. There you go. Whoo, man, I got a hold of you. What's up, bro? What's up, man? Hey, how's it going? Um, I, I absolutely love the show tonight. Um, one of the things I found really interesting uh, was uh, the, the talk about Egypt. I uh, <laughs> I, I consider myself uh, an Egyptologist, uh, <clears throat> you know, in practice. Um, from from yeah, I uh, big big African history um, fan, um, and I've probably read hundreds of books on uh, on, on African history and, and Egypt uh, and Egypt's role uh, in the ancient world. And uh, you know, to hear somebody talk about it from uh, from the contemporary view, uh, you know that that was that was very very interesting um, to me. Um, you know, I would I would love to write to go in a pyramid. <laughs> right? That um, that that would be something that would be um, you know really really exciting. Um, you know, to to really uh, to to visit um, you know Egypt uh, because I've read so much about Egypt. Um, uh, again, you know, I thought it was a great show tonight. Um, Really, um, you know, really excited to, to talk real quickly, uh, you know, about uh, ECRIT and the opportunities at, 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 at ECRIT. And, and one reason is that, you know, ECRIT provides the opportunity for people to, to really build wealth. And a lot of times when we think about building wealth, you know, we, of course, think about, you know, in, investing in stocks and bonds and those things. And that is definitely a way to do it. Um, but the biggest way to build wealth in America is, you know, through home ownership. That's how most people start that process of building wealth. And, uh, you know, for a lot of people um, that, uh, that that has kind of been a dream deferred um, because of credit, because of credit scores. And, uh, you know, I, I think that what it is that you have done uh, by creating um, this FinTech, right? And this is, this is digitally driven by a platform uh, that allows people to not only um, you know, get that that ECRIT credit score, get their credit report, but also uh, through the bill pay portal, um, it, it digitally allows you not to have those errors on on your report, on your credit report that sometimes can can have you not be able to access credit, not because of anything that you've done wrong, but because of misinformation uh, that, that has to flow through so many different hands. Uh, and, you know, if uh, if I could kind of turn the table on you and ask you, um, you know, how did you come up with the uh, with that bill pay portal, because I think that is such a fantastic idea. Well, Bill, I knew, you know, with creating the ECRA credit report, creating an opportunity for people to get a second chance on redeeming themselves. And uh, with the point system, the way ECRA is structured, I mean, if a person gets into a little bind, that's going to happen. Nobody's perfect. Right, that's reality. But with that redemption plan to gain those points back, to gain those points back, uh, we had. I, I said to myself, there has to be another part part to it. You know, you can pay your bills, pay your bills through the Eager Bill Pay portal, even unconventional bills that deemed you credit worthy. And uh, on the second hand. We can validate that through the ECRIT bill pay portal, which gave the birthright to the ECRIT lending corp. It says, if we can create a lending division, right, that's connected to a credit report, what substantiate its true intrinsic value is paying their bills through that portal. The devil is in the details. It's the processes that matters most. It's the little things because so many people 
have been turned down because of unfortunate incidents that took place in their lives. For an example, someone has a bankruptcy. If someone have a judgment or a collection, that's not totally indicative of their credit character. Things happen in life. No one is perfect. This entire economy is supported by small business owners, the nine to five guy that gets up and go to work every day to take care of his family or vice versa. So why can't we accommodate them, show them appreciation, right? From an economic standpoint, there's a system that's existing, a credit system that's been here for many, many decades called Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. And we all know, I'm not going to bash anybody. We all know that they are B to B to C operations. The creditor reports it to the credit bureaus and they make that information available to you. You have no idea what's going to go in that credit report. And we know statistically 80% of the American population have inaccuracies on their credit report. So with ECRIT being a B2C, giving you total control of your credit life, so many people have suffered, millions have suffered and are going on. And I'm sure they said to themselves, if I had this chance, if this wasn't on my credit report, this is a big deal. When you look at the power of cash and credit, credit's a big ordeal. So with a B2C operation, that says it all. You can control your credit de destiny. And to answer your question, how do you control your credit destiny? With the bill pay system. You pay your bills real time. You get a reminder and email five days before your ECRIT bill due date is actually due, right? And then it's seven days with the net, your creditor's bill is due. And what's interesting about ECRIT, when you look at the minorities and you know where we've come from, the struggle, the hard work, the years, it's factual. We don't have to ignore that. We don't have to be you know, shy away from that. That's a reality. But when I look at ECRIT, when you create ECRIT, it, it serves so many purposes, so many class distinctions, not only the poor, but the middle class, also the wealthy, the millionaire who has an erroneous, erroneous information on their credit report as well. So collabor cor collaboratively, it's a universal tool that everyone can use to their advantage. Now, those people who are in a good position where they don't have to worry about that, that's great. But when you're looking at 80% of the American population, there's a great need for it. But the ECRIT bill pay portal is what puts the nuts and bolts together and make it a reality and validate your credit worthiness and improve to the ECRIT lending core that you are a bona fide participant to get a new home at a good interest rate, to get a refinancing, at a lower interest rate. And it took time, this didn't happen overnight. It, it did not happen because first of all, <laughs> I can draw so many questions and say, well, why hasn't it taken its full form? Of course, we're in the middle of an IPO, we're raising money. And, and sometimes I, I don't know, but what I do know, the drive, you know, we I've been very fortunate to work with some amazing people, Bill, like yourself, to keep the ball moving. And now ECRIT is sitting on thousands and thousands of members beyond. And, uh, but it didn't happen overnight and we're still building and growing. But to answer your question, once again, the bill pay portal is what, what makes ECRIT the soundboard it has become. Absolutely. Yeah, very, very insightful uh, to help people to to make sure that that they are aware of when their bills are necessary to be able to pay those bills through that portal and and really make it B to C. Um, that you know, I, I mean, I just think that's incredibly insightful on the part of the ECRA team. And, and you know, Bill, it's always a pleasure, man. I tell you, you've given me some great ideas. And working with you has been phenomenal, and I look forward to it going forward. And one thing I want to say here, we got about 40, 50 seconds. What's interesting about ECRIT is the fact that it's like a David versus Goliath. The credit bureaus are following ECRIT. 
people are implementing, you know, trying to implement what we do. And that's intriguing. I don't have a problem with competition. In fact, I like competition because it makes me better. And I like the fact, and it shows us that we're going in the right direction. Out of all these decades, now you want to create, you know, uh, uh, programs and tools that's bona fide, viably, ecrit without question. And I like that. So thank you. Thank the ecrit team. Thank the listeners. You are so great. We thank you so much because without you, nothing exists. We all need each other without question. And I just want to thank all of you. And Bill, I'm going to say good night to you, man, and we'll talk. I'm going home. I'm checking out of here. I haven't eaten. You know, I'm going to get some, maybe some Kentucky Fried Chicken. You think okay, <laughs> Bill? <laughs> Y'all have a Until next time, take care of yourself. This is the Cleveland Gary Show on 104. 104-